Welcome to the Midweek Review and this week we're looking at the EcoFlow Delta 2. I'm going to see what's under the hood, put this thing through its paces and then we'll figure out if it's the right battery for you. So basic features wise you've got your input section here with your car and solar powered charging port here and your wall socket adapter here with an overload protector underneath this flap that kind of closes quite neatly. Then you've got four wall sockets with their own on off switch so you're not going to run out of plugs to stick in here. Down the bottom of this panel you've got all of your 12 volt options so you've got a 12 volt socket for a car fridge and two of those little 12 volt sockets that take those things with pins that you can never find the so that's kind of handy. Swinging it around to the other side we've got all our USB ports and our main display so you've got two USB-A two fast charge USB ports, two USB-C ports with up to 100 watts of output and they've also got their own on off switch and then there's the on off switch for the whole unit. With fan ports on either side we've also got on this side an extra battery port so you can plug in extra batteries and increase not the output of this unit but the storage capacity. It's like putting extra water tanks on your house. As usual, you get a little accessories pack and you get some mints. These are the do not eat throw away flavor. And you get three cords. You get an adapter cord for your car. You get the 12 volt adapter cord and you also get your wall socket. Charging wise, they recommend you use their cable. Plug it directly into the wall. That should be charged in 50 minutes. That's a pretty high input, making it about the fastest in its class. That's a really high input, making this the fastest charging power bank in its class. Now let's talk about solar charging. They reckon that with the right adapter cable, you can plug up to two 220 watt panels or one set of 400 watt panels into this thing and fully charge it in just under two and a half hours in optimal conditions. Now we know that solar charging is fraught with all sorts of variables like cloud cover, heat, all of those sorts of things where you hold your tongue when you plug it in even. But what that means is that if you have decent panels and you plug them in properly, you should easily be able to charge this battery over the course of a day and run whatever you need over the course of the night. I will point out one thing and that is that to use the EcoFlow panels with the EcoFlow battery, you require an adapter cable to convert from the normal solar fitting into the battery fitting. There are other panels on the market, like these ones here, that come with the right plug already attached. And that simply means plug and play and one less thing to lose. I'd like to encourage these battery companies to think about simplifying their product a bit more and not relying so much on so many adapter cables because they are seriously just one more thing to lose. So as you can see, in the middle of winter at midday, with the panels pointed towards the sun, not a cloud in the sky, the display is saying three hours to raise this battery 30%. Look, that's not really too bad, and I think that number will come down a bit, but it's important when you're talking about solar generation of power to be realistic, a lot of people tend to overstate their claims. Under the bonnet, it's got 950 watt hours of capacity and that's based on 12 volts at 80 amp hours. It's got an 1800 watt maximum power delivery. So what does all this mean in terms of real world use? I can charge this thing 89 times. I can charge this thing here 16 times. I can run this constantly for 24 hours. I can run that for two and a half days. And I can also 
catch up on some work while I'm charging all of these things at once. So I couldn't blow it up, even though I'm charging all of these devices, running a fridge, running a light, and using a circular saw all at the same time. Obviously, if you're running all of these devices at the same time, those figures are going to differ dramatically. They were based on individual use. But this gives you an idea that this tiny little battery that is remarkably light, it's got a bit of kick to it. I wonder how I can kill it. This ought to do the trick. This is getting frustrating. So I think the message here is if you work like an Italian bricklayer and you've got everything plugged in at once and you want to keep your beer cold, this is probably the smallest, most powerful, fastest charging battery I've come across and with unreasonable use, I still couldn't kill it. Now the next part about this power bank is obviously that it can be controlled by an app. I hadn't used the EcoFlow app since I reviewed the last EcoFlow and in that time it forgot who I was so I had to go through the whole process of logging in again. So from start it takes about two to three minutes to get into the app. The good news is as soon as you turn Bluetooth on and get near this, there's no codes to scan or anything. It just recognizes the device straight away. I agree to the privacy guidelines and then I've got to set up the Wi-Fi and the password. Oh, I can set up later. Good. I can't be bothered with that stuff if it's going to forget me anyway. Right, so we're straight in and straight away I can see how much capacity the battery has and I can remotely turn off the AC, the 12 volt DC and the USB right here from the app. So that's pretty cool. If it's lights out time for the kids, lights out. I was pretty skeptical about apps to control power banks at the start, but when I started using them, particularly camping and you hide them underneath the car to keep them out of the rain or something like that, being able to access the control panel basically from your phone is really handy, particularly if it's late at night and you don't want to stumble around in the dark. So definitely a really good interface for their app. Makes a lot of sense. Doesn't tell you stuff you don't need to. Lets you do what you need to do. Don't forget guys, if you like reviews like this, hit the little subscribe button down there, give it a thumbs up. There's plenty more on timthompson.ag. I'll see you next week.